Can you give us kind of like layman's terms or just kind of the basics of those microbes, kind of information growers should know to help improve plant health and growth? Sure. So um, what it sounds like you're referring to is like the soil food web. And we have like our lower bacteria, right? Which is, you know, kind of just what you think of when you think of bacteria. We also have like our protozoa, which are which are kind of just like the, the predators within the, the soil world. Um, protozoa actually means early animal or first animal. They're supposedly the first step in evolution between bacteria and animal. And what they do is they run around, they swim around, they little wiggle around and stuff, um, and they consume the lower bacteria. So the lower bacteria consumes organic matter um, that possesses forms of nutrients, and then the protozoa will come around and consume that bacteria and unlock those nutrients. They change it from one form to another. Like I had mentioned earlier, just kind of touched on it, there are different forms of these nutrients. There's different forms of nitrogen. There's different forms of phosphorus. And what this biology is doing when it's consuming lower bacteria is it's changing it from one cycle to another. And you hear this as the nitrogen cycle or the phosphorus cycle. Um, There's also nematodes. Nematodes are like tiny little little worms. They serve a whole bunch of different functions. There's predatory nematodes. Um, there's a lot of different species of nematodes. But a lot of the time, they consume bacteria. They can also consume fungus. And in this process, they're breaking down and releasing nutrients from bacteria, but also converting things like polysaccharides into um, simple sugars. So they're taking complex sugars or turning them into simple sugars, um, and they're allowing for other biology to consume it and feed on. It's all just like this big cycle, right? And then we also have, you know, um, um, amoebas and archaea and stuff like that. And they all kind of serve similar functions as protozoa. There's flagellates. And they're within the protozoa family. Um, but further on, like in the soil food web, we have like microarthropods, right? Which are tiny, tiny insects like mites. And mites can actually consume forms of protozoa. They also break down and shred organic matter. And their excrement um, is full of nutrients for the plant as well. So all of these components are required to really have like a healthy, living, organic soil that's full of cycling nutrients and a diversity of compounds that promote that flavor and that give, give people the, the outcome that they're looking for with living soil and organic cultivation. We can tailor different fermentations whether they're aerobic with oxygen, um, multiplied with oxygen, or anaerobic multiplied without oxygen, we can tailor different fermentations to introduce specific forms of these biology. We can also tailor them by adding different food sources to our fermentations. Different, different species of bacteria, they, they prefer different food sources, which is why there's different types of like agar plates and stuff like that, right? Um, so we can actually tailor our fermentations through different food sources, through different polysaccharides, as well as different enzymes and amino acids to promote diversity within like our fermentations and introduce them to the soil. That's kind of more complicated and requires a little bit of understanding, but it's a really, really fascinating aspect of living soil that I think people shouldn't ignore. And it's also really a lot of fun. So you hear about people talking about, um, lactic acid bacteria serum or fermenting, you know, making activated um, effective microorganisms or um, aerated compost teas and things like that. That's, that's kind of the, the, the foundation of it, but you can take it a little bit further when you understand how biology works and what it requires to multiply, then you can, you can promote the multiplication of very specific species of biology, especially if you're using inoculants like a source inoculant. For example, there's, um, you know, phosphorus solubilizing microbes, right? You can introduce phosphorus solubilizing microbes, the food source they prefer, as well as the enzymes that they secrete to kind of give them the home and the stimulation they require um, to thrive and multiply them. And I think that that's like, that's kind of like the next level, like advanced stuff that people can get into um, that really takes someone from struggling with living soil and organic cultivation to like really taking full advantage of it and seeing like its real potential, which can be intimidating, but in the end, the juice is definitely worth a squeeze. And I highly encourage people to dive down those rabbit holes and learn about microbes and biology to 
you know, level up their game. This clip is brought to you by AC Infinity. Use discount code MrGrow at 15 to save on any of their products. Thank you.